Thor, the God of Thunder, founding Avenger, King of Asgard, one of the most powerful heroes on Earth. But we've got a challenger approaching, Black Adam. Both are ancient magical beings, both have crazy lightning powers, but who would win in a fight? What are they? That's what we're going to find out. We're going to analyze their strengths, their weaknesses, their powers and abilities, especially their lightning, their glorious hair or lack thereof, and find out who comes out on top. Who wins in the battle arena? Cue the music. What's up guys, I'm Daniel and this is Danko. We do fight breakdowns like this one every week, plus the occasional ranking video or things like that. So if that seems interesting to you, well sit back and enjoy the video. Hit that like button. If you want to, we'll hit the subscribe button while you're at it. Hello? I accept your surrender. I'm not peaceful, nor do I surrender. And let's actually start out with talking about the newcomer, Black Adam. Teth Adam, better known by legend as Black Adam, is the former champion of the Wizard Shazam in the Council of Wizards. He was bestowed the powers of the Egyptian gods. With these gifts, freed his people from the former King of Kandak and would go on to become the ruler of his homeland. However, he became increasingly more brutal and ruthless along the way, unintentionally releasing the seven deadly sins, killing countless millions of people. Due to this, he was imprisoned by Shazam for 5,000 years, until he was released and called upon to save Kandak one more time. Black Adam has the powers of six different Egyptian gods, Shu, Horus, Mon, Zahudi, Atone, and Mahen. And well, some of those aren't the most useful things for a fight, like the courage of Mahen or the wisdom of Zahudi. We can definitely talk about his strength, his durability, his speed, and his lightning. Black Adam is incredibly strong in the movie, and he's got absolutely no problem of using that strength to kill anybody in his path. Seriously, the guy has no chill. He'll send you flying miles away without even blinking an eye, or easily rip apart vehicles, clap his hands, and create a shockwave. Sometimes he'll even create shockwaves with just his punches. But the most impressive thing he ever did was catch a gigantic statue and lift it up over his head, easily holding it up. Now, scaling on this might be a little bit off, but I think it's safe to say that it's about the same size as the Washington Monument, which would weigh like somewhere between 80 to 100,000 tons. And if we just throw those numbers on the champion statue as well, well this is easily one of the most impressive strength feats in the DCEU. Like, easily. Superman is flying around lifting apartment buildings while Black Adam is out there carrying around statues that weigh 10 to 12 times as much. Not even fair. Black Adam is also incredibly, incredibly tough. He can take explosions, not even flinch, and is completely and totally bulletproof, to the point where heavy mounted machine guns just kind of bounce off his face. He was able to take attacks from Hawkman and his nth metal weapons, which while they do rock him, never draw any blood or put him down. And then while he was put down for a few seconds by a punch from Atom Smasher, the only thing that seemed to consistently hurt him was the magical Eternum energy. It would leave cuts and burns, which he would then just heal up with his lightning. And then, man is Black Adam fast. Like this was one of the things that shocked me the most in the movie. Black Adam is just so fast. You could possibly put him up there with The Flash or Superman, because Dwayne Johnson, who's also a producer on the movie, so it's kind of like the word of God here, said that Black Adam is faster than light. He's constantly using his speed, flying around leaving after images, catching bullets, redirecting rockets. He's even got his own Quicksilver scene, able to see the world in slow motion, 
and take down everybody all while an explosion is frozen in place behind him. And then he's able to just humiliate Hawkman and constantly blitz him, even though Hawkman is able to react to lightning. He's able to outdo Wonder Woman's bullet feet, intercepting a bullet that was fired at much closer range. And while he was further away too, he traveled from Russia to the Middle East and from the Middle East to China all within seconds, even creating a sonic cone while surroundings just zoom past him like he's Makari or something. But it seems like Black Adam's favorite tactic it's just a spam lightning everywhere. He's able to fire up bolts of lightning that can completely disintegrate a person. But it's really so much more than that. He can blow a hole through a mountain and essentially vaporize the rock, launch out bolts of lightning all around him, even release an omnidirectional blast in order to get rid of Dr. Fate's clones. But his most impressive showings are when he gets a bit too angry and his rage starts slipping out of control. The first explosion just ravaged the ancient palace and crumbled statues, killing everybody that was inside. But it didn't quite destroy the whole building. That same building was still standing 5,000 years later. The second explosion occurred when his powers raged out of control inside the intergang mine. And while most of the brunt of the explosion went upwards and out of the mine, it still ground zeroed the entire base and more. Then his third explosion was because of a Shazam bolt, which sent up a mountain-sized tower of water and ice, and then sent out a shockwave that was even bigger and dispersed the clouds. Finally, in his fight against Sabak, He's able to channel his lightning and concentrate on just a demon rather than losing control and eventually rips him in half. Goes all Mortal Kombat on him. I kneel before no one. At least make it a challenge for me. Thor, the god of thunder, king of Asgard, founding Avenger, beautiful hair and bulging biceps. I am the god of thunder. He grew up in the palaces of Asgard as royalty, becoming a pompous and arrogant prince, loved a good fight, and would seek out violence without thinking anything through. And he ended up accidentally nearly restarting an ancient war between Asgard and Jotunheim. Not a great look. Thor was denied the right to become king. He was stripped of his power and lost his hammer Mjolnir and banished to Earth. There, he'd have to learn to become worthy once more, and from there, really relearn what worthiness means altogether. Being a literal god, having that divine alien blood just coursing through his veins. What do you, what do you think is coursing through my veins right now? Cheese whiz. Well, Thor obviously has some godly powers. He's crazy, crazy strong. I mean, let's talk about this, the time where Thor restarted the forge on Nidavellir. So in order to do this, Thor takes rockets in his little space pod and just starts spinning, spinning, and spinning, and spinning, and spinning, and then he throws it, just like he used to throw Mjolnir. And when he hits the edge of the ring, well, he's stopped. The pod is still pulling though, and so that means by Newton's third law, that Thor is having to exert the same amount of force to make sure that he doesn't get pulled off. You pull me off the- Oh my god, him I pulled you off. So while the pod technically moved the rings, Thor countered it by exerting the same amount of force, meaning that Thor moved the same weight. And just how big is Nidavellir? How big are these rings? Massive. Nidavellir is the same size as a small moon. That comes from the Greg Steele, the VFX supervisor for this scene. He's the guy who designed Nidavellir. So yeah, I think he knows what he's talking about when he says how big it is. Thor is strong enough 
to move a small moon. And we can still see all that strength when he throws a punch or when he starts swinging Stormbreaker around. I mean, let's just take a look at stuff like destroying the Rainbow Bridge and destroying Sokovia. Thor was cracking and shattering apart the Rainbow Bridge with some truly just devastating hits. Hits that were making the Bifrost Observatory feel like an earthquake, actually shaking all of Asgard. That's insanely impressive. Then there's Sokovia, and while Thor just annihilated that city, releasing a multi-city block shockwave with one hit. He neutralized Sokovia's kinetic energy and countered it. And all in all, this just comes out to a city level feat, which I mean, does make sense. Thor was literally destroying a whole city with one hit. And Thor isn't just out here destroying cities or moving small moons. He's not all just big, huge muscles. That's power. The brain is a muscle, and that's a muscle, and that's a muscle. They are all muscles. This is all muscle. He can take a whole lot of attacks, too. Like, a whole lot of attacks. Like, Nidavellir. Probably the most impressive thing any hero has done in the MCU so far. So what exactly is going on here? You understand, boy? You're about to take the full force of a star. It'll kill you. Well, Anid of Valir is actually a neutron star, which has a quarter of the sun's luminosity. But here's the thing, you can't say that Thor was taking all of the star's power, he was actually just taking all the energy that was hitting him directly. He was also only withstanding it for a little while, roughly 47 seconds, before he collapsed and was knocked out and was sent flying away. So. What's all this mean? Well, track with me here. The largest nuclear bomb ever detonated was a 50 megaton explosion, or 50 million tons of TNT. Thor taking the neutron star is equivalent to him surviving the largest man-made nuclear explosion every hundredth of a second for 47 seconds straight or surviving this explosion for 4,000 times, back to back to back to back to back, just over and over and over again. That's what Thor did here, which is just absolutely insane. However, he was knocked out. He clearly has his limits, even within this absolutely crazy showing. But it's also Thor on his very, very best day. I mean, the Russo brothers have said before that the only reason that Thor survived the Neutron Star was because he was that determined to kill Thanos. Normally, he couldn't survive as well against something like that. But if that's his upper limits, if that's Thor at his absolute best, well then his absolute best is truly insane kinda puts Superman's one nuclear bomb to shame. And it doesn't just stop there, it's not just strength and durability. Thor has plenty of other powers too. I mean like his lightning, it can kill Chitauri Leviathans, it can help melt vibranium. He can throw lightning out absolutely all around him, send Hulk flying, send Thanos flying, and all this is just really scratching the surface. I mean, the guy is creating massive storms all around him in an instant. But it's really when he combines his lightning and Mjolnir or Stormbreaker. That's when he's at his absolute best. And when he does that, well, the dude almost took out all of Jotunheim. Seriously, I'm not kidding. It was shaking the whole planet, cracking the ice layer of the ice world and formed a giant canyon that dropped out to the depths of space. And it's not just that, because Thor actually created a canyon that was roughly a hundred times the size of the Grand Canyon, the grandest of all canyons. The director even said that Thor had broke the floor of the planet apart with just one hit, with just one lightning blast. 
the damage that Thor has done, which is essentially breaking the very floor of the planet up. That's not even the strongest lightning bolt that Thor has ever created. Now, he saved that one specifically for his sister. I mean, it completely consumed the palace, which is already like the same size as mountains. It's a pretty freaking impressive. Let's kill him properly this time. Heroes don't kill people. Well, I do. So, who wins here? Well, let me just start out with saying movie hype is a thing. It's definitely real. We see a new hero come into the mix and suddenly he's just the best thing ever. Can't lose, can beat anybody, has the craziest feats you'll ever see. It's definitely real. And so we gotta do our best to fight back against it. Try not to let it interfere with this fight right here. And if that's gonna be our mindset, well, then I think Thor is stronger. I know, lifting up that statue is like high impressive. If it weighs as much or even more than the Washington Monument, then it's one of the best strength feats we've seen in the whole DCEU. But Thor is literally shifting a small moon. Like legit, we saw him do this. We can see the math. He's exerting enough force to pull the rings of a small moon. And is striking with his hammers clearly scales to that too, destroying Sokovia, rupturing apart Jotunheim. He's even able to fracture a small planetoid just by placing his hand on the hammer. Sure, Thor did struggle to lift up a statue that was much smaller than Black Adam's, but I still don't think that means we can ignore all of his good stuff. Don't get me wrong, it's close. But I think Thor is still a little bit stronger. He's got better striking power with those hammers too. Thor might be the tougher one out of the two also. I mean, taking the full on force of a neutron star is a really hard feat to top. That's gonna go down as like one of the best of the best of all time. But I also think Thor is able to take magical attacks better too. Black Adam was knocked out by a Ternium missile, basically a magic rocket, while Thor has taken plenty of magical attacks and survived magical explosions several times bigger. It's looking like he's the tougher one out of the two as well. Where it begins to swing towards Black Adam's favor has to be speed. He's so fast, and he's regularly just abusing this speed. Now, yeah, Thor isn't necessarily slow. In fact, you can see that he's just as fast as the lightning he's throwing around. He can travel around and move at lightning speed. And so, yeah, he's not what you might call slow. But Black Adam? Well, he's faster than the speed of light. He should be up there with Superman and Flash. And he will use this speed against literally anybody even people who are lightning speed like thor like hawkman he can react to lightning and yet black adam just absolutely humiliates him with his speed just makes him look stupid that's such a nice advantage to have here in this fight then both of them have their lightning powers thor even has the added bonus of some deadly lightning weapons Black Adam is able to injure Hawkman. Thor can injure Hulk and Thanos. Both are willing to use their lightning with lethal intent. Black Adam probably a bit more. And they both have some seriously powerful potential too. I mean, one of Black Adam's Shazam bolts was creating explosions the size of a mountain. One of Thor's lightning bolts was covering a mountain-sized palace, while another one destroyed a city. I think the difference between the two of them is that while Thor is obviously totally willing to kill, he's got no problem with killing enemies, Black Adam actually fights for the kill. That's what he's going for, he's trying to kill you. He's trying to kill Thor. Thor isn't necessarily trying to kill Black Adam. 
think there's a pretty distinct difference between those two. I also feel like I just have to really stress the speed difference between the two of them here. Gotta hit it again. Black Adam is gonna be landing more punches. He's gonna be dodging more attacks. He's gonna be doing more damage than Thor and taking less damage in return. The only way for Thor to overcome this is one, get faster, or two, have more powerful attacks. You're gonna be hitting less of them, so you gotta make each one of them count all that much more. And while I think Thor is packing some serious juice here, he's the literal god of thunder, nothing really suggests that he can genuinely outpower Black Adam enough where Black Adam's speed advantage doesn't matter. I mean, we're talking about the power to knock Black Adam out just a few hits. I don't think Thor can do that. So, who wins here? Well, I love Thor, and I don't want to get caught up in the new movie hype but I think it's gotta be The Rock. I think Black Adam has to take it. Black Adam wins. But what do y'all think? Sign off in the comments down below. I know you're gonna have thoughts and feelings on this one for sure. And if you stuck around this long and made it to the end of the video, that's amazing. Thank you so much for watching us and for supporting us. And if you wanted to subscribe, well, go subscribe. You'll get to see more videos like this one every single week, and I'll see y'all and I'll see y'all next time.